In this video, we're going to discuss the uh, Pythagorean identities, which are probably the most important trigonometric identities uh, out there. So let's start again with a unit circle, and we have an angle, theta, and a point formed by that angle, cosine theta, sine theta, that lies on the unit circle. And to derive these identities, we're going to draw a triangle um, from that point, and notice that uh, the length of the two sides are the absolute values of sine theta and cosine theta. In other words, sine theta might be positive or negative, um, cosine theta might be positive or negative, but since we're dealing with the lengths of the sides of this triangle, uh, we can take the absolute value of the cosine and sine, uh, and those are the lengths. And the length of the hypotenuse of this right triangle is going to be 1 because this is the unit circle. Um, every radius of the unit circle is always going to be 1. In fact, that's why it's called the unit circle. And from the Pythagorean theorem, which you learned probably in seventh grade or so, um, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared for any right triangle. Um, and this is a right triangle, so we can just substitute our values for the sides in here, which is the square of the absolute value of sine plus the square of the absolute value of cosine is equal to 1 squared. This is just substituting the values of the sides into the equation. And um, we can simplify this. Um, when we square it, we don't need to worry about it, the absolute value anymore because we know it's going to be positive, uh, even if sine theta was negative. So we have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. Um, now, this is the Pythagorean identity, the main one, and it's very easy to remember, and you should uh, memorize this and also remember how basically it's gotten. It's gotten from a, derived from a triangle um, using the Pythagorean theorem. Now, once we have this, we can derive two other identities from this identity, at least two, and maybe depending on your definition of it, um, depending on how it's ordered, you can call them different identities, but not, not really. But anyway, before we do that, I want to just remind you of the different um, definitions of some of the trigonometric functions other than sine and cosine. So tangent is sine over cosine, cotangent is cosine over sine, cosecant is 1 over sine, and secant is 1 over cosine. Um, if you don't know these, then you won't be able to really follow the, how to get the other two Pythagorean identities. So here's the, the first one. So again, we always start from the one we know, which is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. And we divide both sides of this equation by cosine squared theta. And when we divide uh, a sum of various terms by cosine uh, or any number, we have to divide each term separately. Uh, sine squared theta divided by cosine squared theta is going to be tangent squared theta. Cosine squared theta divided by cosine squared theta is going to be 1. And on the right, 1 over cosine squared theta is going to be secant squared theta. So if you're able to divide each of the terms of your the original Pythagorean identity by cosine squared theta, you'll be easily able to find out this new formula, which is tan squared theta plus 1 is equal to secant squared theta. Um, and... The other one is, uh, again, we start from this one, but instead of dividing by cosine squared theta, we divide by sine squared theta on both sides. And uh, we get 1 plus cotangent squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta. Again, all we did was divide each of the terms by sine squared theta. So sine squared theta divided by sine squared theta is 1. Cosine squared theta divided by sine squared theta is cotangent squared theta. And 1 divided by sine squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta. And if the algebra behind these steps aren't completely clear, I recommend you find a book in which it might go through slightly more steps in the process than here, but hopefully you'll, you'll be able to see basically how um, we derived these two identities. So that's it. Three main Pythagorean identities, one more important than the other two that you could use to derive the other two. It's probably worth memorizing these two, but not necessarily, especially on the high school level. On any test, you should be able to derive these without too much uh, difficulty.